Hey folks, Sheldon here for the West Coast of Weather Behind the Brew. It is early morning and we're at the Alpine Beer Company in Alpine, California, about 30 miles east of San Diego. Alpine were one of the first US craft breweries to start using New Zealand hops. And today we're going to be brewing a beer with one of those hops, the legendary IPA that is Nelson. Head brewer Sean McElhinney is busying himself around the brewery with other tasks as he waits for the mash tun water to come up to brewing temperature. Malt for the brew, including a 20% rye component, has been prepped the day before. We'll start with uh, augering in our base malt, our two row, from our silo out back. Start filling it up and I'll layer in the rye and our other malt uh, as we go along. We'll fill it up to about 850 pounds and call it good. Once this has occurred, the blended malts are then augured to the mash tun. So we're working on a 10 barrel system. We have 15 barrel fermenters down here. We have 25 barrel uh, fermenters in uh, our garage out back. We need to brew twice to fill up the fermenters that are out back. So basically what we do is we brew a strong wort, dilute it down, so we get more volume, we end up with about 12 barrels out of each batch. Once Sean has the mash underway, he heads out back of the brew house to a shed that houses a number of fermenters. It is a trip he will make numerous times, back and forth during each brew. His first task is to start sanitizing a fermenter that will later contain the batch of Nelson that is currently being brewed. One of the most important parts of our job is cleaning. Right now we're sanitizing all the transfer lines that we're going to be using to pump the the beer from the brew house up into the fermenter. Uh, so at this time, we're taking sanitizer that we have in the fermenter, we're pumping it through the transfer lines, backwards through our heat exchanger to another pump, which is then pumping it back up here, and it's actually uh, going through a spray ball in the fermenter right now. So we're sanitizing the tank, we're sanitizing all our transfer lines, we're sanitizing our heat exchanger, all in one fell swoop. After the sanitizing process is underway, it is back to the brew house to start the Vorloff procedure which is the initial process of clarifying the wort that has been drawn out of the mash tun. Basically we'll take the liquid that's in the mash tun right now and draw it off the bottom very gently, pump it over the top just to, it's sort of like the first step of clarification. Once the Vorloff procedure is in process, it is time to start preparing the initial hop addition. This is where the majority of the bitterness in the final product will come from. Only varieties of New Zealand hops are used in Nelson IPA. Pat McElhinney, founder of the Alpine Beer Company and Sean's dad, explains that the origins of this brew began during a vacation in New Zealand with his wife Val in 2003. The end of the trip was uh, in the Nelson region, which is at the north end of the South Island. And uh, it's very diverse, has uh, a lot of hiking and uh, beautiful mountains, beautiful coastline. It's a big region, and part of the region is used for hop growing. And as you're driving along the roads uh, uh, going north, you're driving past these beautiful hop fields that I had no idea were there until, wow, that looks like hops. Those are hops. So I, after that trip was when I actually discovered that they grew hops there, then I started investigating and got some samples and was amazed. I was able to use my experience to kind of put together what I thought would make a really good combination of uh, hops and included rye in a beer that um, was one of those styles that's up and coming. It's kind of an earthy flavor that, it, that adds to the hops that have also an earthy content. To it. So I thought that was a, you know, a good combination and as it turns out it worked well. So now you know why there's a photo of a New Zealand bay on the label of a San Diego craft brew. Okay, now back to the brew. The initial hop addition is a New Zealand hop whose name we can't reveal because dead man can't drink beer. After the first hop addition is made, it is time to sparge. We are running liquid from our mash tun into our boil kettle. At the same time, we are replacing the water that we're draining with more clean water. What we're trying to accomplish is rinsing the residual sugars that we've created uh, through the solution and into the boil kettle. It's sort of like a balancing act. Don't want to add too much too fast, otherwise you'll overflow. Don't want to add too little, you'll dry it out. Once sparging is underway, it is time to prep the yeast. 
Another trip to the fermenter shed for Sean is in order. We're gonna harvest some yeast from a beer that has been fermenting for about four or five days. What we're trying to do is get yeast that's already acclimated to the environment that we're gonna put it in. Um, so it's still actively fer fermenting. Uh, we're gonna get some nice healthy yeast, which we'll collect in this keg and then force back into the empty fermenter that we'll be brewing into. What we're looking for is a nice creamy consistency. Looking good to me. Clarity Foam from White Labs is also added to the yeast to help the colloidal stability of the beer by reducing chill haze. At this juncture, all the liquid has been drained from the mash tun to the kettle and Sean's brewing assistant Scott arrives to begin the grain out. After the wort has boiled for approximately an hour, it is time for the second hop addition. These are the Nelson Sauvin hops, the beer's namesake. We're adding them at this stage in the boiling process to impart uh, uh, a good flavor from the hop and uh, a decent bit of aroma, but mainly just flavor. At the same time, Wurflock tablets are added to further clarify the brew. Fifteen minutes later, a yeast nutrient and Southern Cross hops are added to the kettle. We're collecting a sample to test the gravity of the beer. Basically what we do is we back brew. So we brew a strong wort and then dilute down to the gravity that we're looking for just to uh, give us the most volume. Now I'm gonna add some hops. I like the Southern Cross because it has a, a big flavor, but it's just not real intense and pungent. It's just floral and piney, and it complements the earthiness and the spiciness and the uh, grapefruit citrusy parts of the Nelson. It is now time for Sean to knock out the wort to the fermenters, and he also adds oxygen to increase the yeast cell wall viability. The water is then pumped over from the brew house to the fermenter shed. Well, we finished knocking out, meaning we finished transferring beer from the boil kettle into our fermentation vessel, which we had already put yeast in earlier today. Uh, at this point, fermentation has begun. Uh, the yeast inside is gonna start consuming sugar. Its byproduct is gonna be producing alcohol and carbon dioxide. We let that go for about seven to 10 days, uh, depending on how active and healthy the yeast is. Once that's done, uh, we'll lower the temperature to about 48 degrees. At that point, we're tricking the yeast into falling asleep. What they wanna do at that point is fall to the bottom of the tank. Um, once we've done that, we usually wait about 24 hours. Uh, after that, we dump as much of the yeast as we can. When we have dumped as much yeast as we can, we'll then add hops. Uh, we'll recirculate and we'll let the beer sit with the hops in the solution for approximately two weeks. At that point, we take the beer that's in the fermenter and we bring it over to the bright tank, uh, which is where we will clarify and carbonate the product. After 48 hours, uh, we will have a carbonated clear beverage that's ready to package for everybody to enjoy and drink. Amen. Well, here we are with a couple of fresh pints of Nelson, beautifully brewed by Sean over here. Thank you for an awesome day, mate. It was fabulous. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. <sighs> fabulous. Tropical Nelson. citrus deliciousness. That's Nelson. <laughs>